Puppet Combo has been developing games for years, but Murder House would be his first feature on Steam and consoles. The Massacre had made me a fan, so there was no delay in picking it up when it released. I've said it before, but no one quite captures the rawness and tone of horror like Puppet Combo, that his work feels true to the films that inspired them. Murder House is a perfect entry point, as it is linear and story driven, and the one that comes closest to playing out like a movie. The game starts with the prelude, three years before the main game in 1985 at a mall. We play as a kid who, after falling asleep in a photo booth, wakes up to the whole place being closed. Why his parents didn't make a concerted effort to find him is something to suspend. What matters is where our actions take us. I'm a fan of the PlayStation style graphics, as well as the Silent Hill camera direction. In development, Puppet Combo was unsure whether to employ the camera style, as it could be disorienting, making you feel less in control. It was a good choice. You'll soon arrive at the photo shoot location from the game's opening and be able to spot the Easter Ripper disappearing as we make our way around. Along the walls are pictures of missing children that sadly will soon join. There is a bit to play through if you manage to elude him in the bathroom stall, but even with the help of an adult, some things cannot be changed. Three years have passed since then. The Easter Ripper caught and executed. Many of his victims' bodies were never recovered. A news crew arrives at his former home for a story, having paid a real estate agent for access to the closed off residence. The gate was left open, but the front door locked. The agent nowhere to be found. Being an intern, of course the responsibility will fall upon us to find entry. The gratitude for doing so? To carry the gear inside. It's hard not to identify with our character Emma, as I'm sure we've all been in a position of starting at the bottom, undervalued, doing our best to move up. Let's get rolling. The power's out. We'll turn it back on. I don't know how. Figure something out. The songs that play during these sections, man, they can hit strong. The composers did a phenomenal job, making an extensive and diverse soundtrack. It reminds me of my favorite movie last year, Terrifier 2, where there was a strong tonal contrast. All manner of menial work comes our way, each a cue from the game to explore and take note of areas to revisit later. As can be expected from the house, the scale's kept small, where you can quickly make a lap of the place. With the few places you can go, it helps to keep the momentum constant, where you will seldom be at a loss of where to head to next, and keeping dread high once blood has been shed. The grungy feel does give you the sense of the place being abandoned, but also of concealed secrets. The atmosphere is strong. When we're ordered to grab the crew's lunch, that's where the malevolent fun begins. The fan has been demolished, with the note left on the hood. Someone wants to play a game, one in which we'll be actively hunted. There is nowhere to run, with the gate now chained. The crimson lighting, the ominous siren set the scene perfectly. In fact, nearly every instance of Murder House is well framed, with the camera angles, campy voice acting, an emotive soundtrack sealing the slasher feel. The pace follows suit, so right when you would expect him, the Easter Ripper makes his appearance. One aspect that I've admired about Puppet Combo is how true his work is to the films that inspire him. The animations and themes push limits just like in the genre. It's undiluted, pure. There are elements that defy logic, such as how could the guy go undetected? In my mind though, it works because evil itself defies logic. Even if it can't be imagined, you expect the worst. In a grave situation, everything gets discarded socioeconomic status, achievements, none of it will exempt one from death. All that matters is survival. We can fight back with a fire poker and handgun, but all they'll do is provide a window and ammo is best saved for the end. You're bound to take a hit, so it became something I avoided. You'll hear heavy breathing and footsteps when he's in the vicinity. Come into view and he will give chase, trudging into rooms after you. There are several places to conceal ourselves, but it can be hard to gauge if his line of sight was broken with the camera. It won't take long to find out. Three slashes that will succumb to. The system works, but there is a con to it all. The Easter Ripper often isn't around, almost as if he despawns. I've had playthroughs where I didn't encounter him outside scripted moments. 
The dread looms though, the thought that he may surface at any moment never going away. It kept me doing everything as fast as possible. With pencils being somewhat common however, there won't be need to fear lost progress. You can jot down a save in the safe room, and most of the puzzles are straightforward. There are perhaps only one or two that may throw someone off. It won't be long until you make your way where the Easter Ripper kept the kids captive. Damn, is it a sad sight, especially if you take to reading their notes. Reflecting on the missing child posters in the prologue, the depth of the guy's evil truly registers. You have a chance to avenge them in the game's finale, which does strike me as a fitting end. Murder House is roughly two hours, but as I said at the Night of the Scissors, some ideas are best as shorter experiences, that the length is just right for the story being told. Since the release of Murder House on Steam, there have been a few additions that took me by surprise. I played the game several times at launch, but it has been a while since 2020. There is a new epilogue section that drives home the idea of the game feeling like a movie. It took me off guard, but I do like it. If a sequel were ever planned, the door is left open. The other is a first-person camera, and it really places the scale of the house in perspective. It must be commended that in such a small space, you can make an effective game. It's refreshing and presented my favorite jump scare. I reloaded an old save and proceeded to the basement. I didn't encounter anything unusual, nothing to hint that the Easter Ripper was around. As I ascended the flight into the kitchen, I heard a door open. Naturally, I assumed it was from another room, but when I turned around, he was waiting. Man, I was startled. It was awesome. That word describes how I feel about the game. Murder House is a great time, hitting many of the marks I would expect of even horror films. With a share of moments I'm left wanting to relive, an atmosphere I want to immerse myself in, it's hard not to suggest it to genre fans. It's more of a structured experience for a puppet combo, so if you didn't take to his other games but did find merit in his style, say Nun Massacre, or stay out of the house, this may be the ideal game to win you over. And if you haven't heard of either of them, I did make reviews for both, so consider checking them out. In sum, if you're a fan of horror, wanting to play a game that pays tribute to the slasher cinema, and well, you can't go wrong with Murder House.